Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and this is Eek number seven, the electrical engineering class. So the topic of this video is high voltage DC. Now we hear a lot about DC, of course uh, batteries in electric cars for example, that's direct current. Um, I should probably note that if you haven't watched episodes one, two, three, four, and six of my Eek series, you may want to watch those if you're not familiar with current and voltage and direct current and alternating current, um, also things like power factor, that's all explained in my earlier EEK videos. So I'm going to assume that you've watched those already and you know these various terms that I'm going to be throwing out there. So uh, we know that AC is basically alternating current, that's what we use for power grids, and what you may not know is that there is also HVDC, high voltage direct current, and it's actually pretty widely used um, in Asia, in uh, China, I think they installed a, uh, a link, a high voltage direct current line, like high voltage DC power lines uh, that carries, uh, it's, it's 1.1 million volts, which is pretty high, uh, and it uh, can carry 12 gigawatts of electricity. Uh, recall that one gigawatt is more or less the maximum power output of a large modern nuclear reactor. So um, there's another link in, I think it's Brazil, it's about 6.3 megawatts. Uh, the length is something like 2,300 kilometers, and uh, that one carries 6.3 million watts of power. There are also various other HVDC links in, you know, connecting various countries in Europe, uh, also in North America. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about exactly how these things work and some of the benefits and drawbacks of HVDC versus HVAC. So as we know, with alternating current, uh, it works a little bit something like this. On the left you have a nuclear power plant. Uh, generally speaking, there's a transformer that kicks the voltage up really high. Recall that a transformer, if you pass AC through it, kicks the voltage up higher, and when, you say, if the voltage doubles, the current will be cut in half. And that's how you do uh, high voltage power lines, because of course if you dump too much current over a wire, it heats up. So you want current to be a minimum and voltage to be a maximum. So basically you feed the power into the transformer, that kicks the voltage up, it goes across you know, the power pylons, blah blah blah, and on the right hand side eventually you're going to pass that high voltage AC through another transformer to step the voltage back down and the current up, and then you can power, power your cute little house there. Of course with AC you can simply use these transformers and kick the voltage up, but how exactly does high voltage DC work? With high voltage DC you need AC to DC converters that look something like this. Um, you'll notice that this is very large. Uh, in the lower right hand corner there's a yellow square and there are two people inside that square, so this huge sci-fi looking futuristic contraption is an AC to DC power converter. I believe this one is uh, somewhere in Japan. So this is an extra converter that they have to use for high voltage DC. And the way that DC high voltage works is, again, on the left you have your nuclear power plant, that feeds power more or less into a transformer, kicks the voltage up really high. The high voltage is then fed through one of these sci-fi things, the AC to DC converter, and that high voltage DC is then sent over power lines to your other side on the right where it's fed back through another converter that converts from the DC back into AC. Uh, and then that basically goes to your house, blah blah blah, as normal AC power. And that's more or less how it works. I've simplified my diagrams a little bit, but you get the general idea. Okay, so why would you want to use high voltage DC versus high voltage AC? Well, there are several advantages that high voltage DC has. And the first one is that uh, normally with AC you have three phases. When you generate power, I did a video on that, three phase AC power, you have three phases, and so you basically need three wires, three cables going across these power pylons and you know all over the country. With HVDC you can use only two wires and in some cases you can use only one because with one wire uh, it's sort of like a battery, you have a positive and negative terminal and you can say take the negative terminal and, and just stick it into the earth. So you can get away with one wire with HVDC but typically they're going to use two because it's just a plus and minus system, blah blah blah, it gets kind of complicated, but um, generally speaking, instead of normally three wires, you they usually use normally two wires, and that means less wire, which means less cost. On top of that, um, the actual wires that they're stringing along to carry the power 
can be thinner and or they will carry more current. And the reason for this is something called the skin effect. Now here we have a picture of two very fat uh, electrical cables. And on the left we have a uh, DC current flowing through the cable. And you can see these blue dots, those are uh, representing electrons. And so when you have direct current flowing over a conductor, the electrons sort of spread out evenly over, over the entire cross section of the conductor. But on the right we can see AC current flowing through another cable and there you notice that the blue dots sort of spread out towards the edges and that's due to something known as the skin effect. So essentially the skin effect means that if you're not at DC, if you're at any kind of uh, AC frequency, when the electrons travel they tend to move towards the outer surface of the conductor and the center core of the conductor uh, basically there's, there's less and less current. Now it doesn't work exactly as I've drawn it here the, the center is the least conductive, so to speak, and the outer ring of the, condu of the conductor is more conductive, but it gives you the general idea. And what this means is that basically on the DC side you can see you have, you have a larger cross-section where electrons can flow, and that means more current over, over the cable with DC than you can with AC. Another advantage of high voltage DC is that there are no reactive power losses. Now, if you don't know about reactive power losses, you should watch my EEK number four video, which talks about power factor. Uh, the short version is that when the power company generates power and shoots it out over the lines, um, they have to actually send more power than the end users are consuming because there's capacitance and inductance. And with direct current, um, you, you still have some capacitance and so on, but uh, the problem is basically much smaller, so it's more efficient to use high voltage DC. Along similar lines, when you have high voltage DC cables that are underground or underwater, um, there are fewer capacitive losses than with AC systems. So that's more or less because when you have a conductor and it's in the air, the air is an insulator uh, up to a certain point. When you have that same cable and you bury it in the earth or you put it under water, the surrounding earth and water is more conductive and so you get sort of a capacitive effect. And again, that's related to reactants. So when you have high voltage DC, you don't have these capacitive losses and so underground and undersea cables are sort of better off if they are high voltage DC. And finally, another advantage of HVDC is transferring power between countries or between grids that operate at different frequencies. So say in Europe we use 50 hertz, in North America they use 60 hertz, and if you want to make sort of a global network of HVDC connections and share power everywhere, uh, it's even though you have the converters, it's actually more handy because you don't have this difference in frequency because you're converting everything to just pure DC and sharing power in both directions. And when it, that DC gets to its destination, uh, that particular region or country can just take it and invert it back into AC at whatever particular frequency they happen to use. Now, of course, there are disadvantages to HVDC, uh, and the first one is the actual AC to DC converters. They're expensive, and uh, normally with AC, as I showed in my earlier diagram, you kind of just need some transformers, boom, you're done. Right, with DC, you have the extra stage of converting that AC to DC before you send it, and then on the sort of receiving end, you have to convert it from DC back to AC, and that equipment is actually expensive. It's also less reliable. Um, there's uh, a lower uptime. In many HVDC links they have a, a sort of positive and negative configuration on two wires and if there's a failure of you know one or more converters effectively the capacity of those two lines will be chopped in half and generally speaking the reliability is lower because converters are more complicated and blah blah blah. So the sort of overall uptime and reliability of HVDC is lower than HVAC. And the final disadvantage to HVDC is circuit breakers. So when you have a circuit breaker you can think of it like a switch. You have two metal contacts inside that breaker and when the breaker is closed they're pressed together and current will flow from this point to this point. And when you, so you have these two contacts and when you start to pull them apart there's this massive voltage across them. So in between the contacts is something like air or a gas or certain types of oils. In any case it's an insulator. So you start to pull these contacts apart, but because there's this massive voltage across the contacts, sometimes that will cause the insulator, the thin, tiny, thin little layer of, ins of insulator between them, 
to break down due to the high voltage and start conducting. So as the contacts separate, that little arc actually just grows bigger because it's essentially like a wire connecting the two contacts together. And of course arcing is very bad and causes all sorts of problems. And um, Now the thing is with AC, it's kind of easy because as we can see on our little graph here, uh, that's the sine wave uh, representing alternating current, and as you'll notice where the little red circles are, uh, at those points the alternating current reverses directions, which means at those points you have zero volts and zero amps. Now why that matters is because if you have contacts in a high voltage AC circuit breaker and you start to pull it out and an arc forms, dozens of times a second that alternating current is hitting zero volts and zero amps, which means the arc essentially extinguishes itself. When you have high voltage DC, say 600,000 volts, and that's across these two contacts, when you pull them apart, there is no zero crossing. It's always 600,000 volts, which means you have a problem with arcing. And for that reason, high voltage DC circuit breakers are more complex and more expensive and so that's sort of an added cost and, and complexity that makes HVDC systems um, a little bit more of a pain to work with. So that's the scoop on high voltage DC. It is still around. Uh, it didn't die out. And in fact, in recent times, there's been sort of a little bit of a resurgence in HVDC because there, we have all these renewable energy sources and we have solar panels that are pumping out all kinds of DC. And um, there's talk of creating a green grid where it's going to be HVDC everywhere. Uh, I'm not sure how likely that is to happen because there's a massive AC infrastructure, but the point is that HVDC is still around. Um, it has its benefits and drawbacks, and in certain cases it's actually quite useful. So that's it. Um, again, if you want to learn more about current and voltage and all that kind of stuff, check out the other eek videos. Uh, I'll put all the links to all those videos down in the description. For more Tech Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.